Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So today I want to talk about why I use Ubuntu. I use Ubuntu desktop and I also use Ubuntu server instances. In a recent Chris Titus Tech video, Chris describes Ubuntu's decline and why it is not a good choice for a desktop operating system anymore. The first issue he points out is the slowness of the launching of the Firefox web browser in Jammy Jellyfish, which is the Ubuntu 2204 desktop that was recently released. So here we are at an Ubuntu 2204 desktop, and I'm going to launch the Firefox web browser, which is a snap. And as you can see, there is a delay and it comes up to our favorite website. So if we exit it and we instead bring up the Brave browser, once we click on it, it comes up almost immediately with no delay at all. So how can we change this? Well, we can go open a terminal and let's make this font a little bit larger and then let's do a sudo snap remove Firefox so that will remove the Firefox snap package now that Firefox is removed Let's go ahead and add the repository for Mozilla. Let's set the priority on the update to cause Mozilla to update from the repository and then let's go ahead and do an installation of Firefox now that Firefox is installed let's try launching the native version as opposed to the snap package And arguably, that might be somewhat faster, especially on subsequent launches. So really, we can confirm that Firefox installed as a deb package is faster than Firefox installed as a snap. It is true that some snaps are slower due to the fact that by default, they use slower XE compression rather than LZO compression. In 2022, Google Chrome holds a 77% browser market share, whereas Firefox holds only a 7.6% market share. Changing apps in Linux is easy, and I opt for the Brave web browser as a more privacy-centric Chrome-derived browser. Also, Chris mentioned that an Ubuntu 14.04 used to gather and sell user data. That was eight years ago, and it's no longer the case because users voice their concerns, and Canonical no longer does this. So why do I still use Ubuntu? Well, Linux is still a small fraction of the desktop OS market, comprising a mere 2% of worldwide desktops. Worldwide OS usage is Android at 42%, Windows at 31%, iOS at 18%, and OS X with 7%. For desktop OS only, Windows is at an impressive 83%, OS X is at 12%, 3% are unknown and 1% are Chrome OS. So in the server market, this is quite different because 93% of the world's top 1 million servers run on Linux. 
Ubuntu is the leading Linux server OS with a 30% market share. And then proprietary Unix has a 24% market share and CentOS at 17% and Debian at 13% and many others with lower percentages. So Windows Server only has a 3% market share in the server market. Linux is not really about distro choice is what I tell people. I tell them that Linux is about customizing the computer and making it your own. So unlike Windows, you can choose any window manager, display manager, file manager, and menu dock in any variant of Linux. My primary motivation for using Ubuntu is the overwhelming dominance of forums and community bulletin boards that support Ubuntu and answer questions about Ubuntu. Open source software will run under all Linux variants, but it's more common to find installation notes that specifically address Ubuntu. So the initial release of the Aptitude Package Manager, which is used in Ubuntu, otherwise more familiar as APT, was in 1996 under Debian. Package managers are valuable because they resolve software dependencies when the package is installed. Microsoft released WinGet, which is the first Windows Package Manager in May of 2021, and it is available for Windows 10 and Windows 11. And it does resolve dependencies in the same way that a Linux Package Manager might. But I'm just wondering why did it take Windows so long to come up with a Package Manager that would manage their installations. So Ubuntu uses APT and packages are in the DEB format. Fedora, Red Hat, and CentOS use the RPM format. Native packages are always the fastest because they are designed for a target system and they share libraries and they resolve dependencies at installation time. So what about app image and snaps? Well, app image is a great way to try out an image without installing anything on your system. They're super portable. All you have to do is download them, change uh, them to make sure you have the execute bit set, and then you can run them. And there's no installation involved. So Snap is a packaging system which was developed by Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, which includes all libraries and dependencies inside of the Snap package. A key advantage of Snaps is that you can run multiple versions of the same app on a machine at the same time. Snap can be used by Ubuntu, Monjero, Linux Mint, Debian, Kali Linux, and Red Hat. The downside of snaps is that since they package all dependencies, they are bulkier than say the DEB or RPM installation packages and they do run slower. So then what about Flatpak? Well, Flatpak is similar to snap because it's a distro agnostic packaging system that has embedded dependencies in the Flatpaks. So Flatpak is a decentralized system, which means that there can be several repositories, unlike Snap, which has a single repository, which is maintained by Canonical. Flatpak apps run in a sandbox, which is an application environment separate from the host. Flatpak packages take up more space than app images or snaps and are slower than app images but they're faster than snaps. The best choice of app image, snap, or flat pack is really up to you. So what makes Canonical special? Well, Canonical developed the LexD container system, which is a superior advancement to Linux containers, and I cover them on the channel all the time. As a matter of fact, at this point, I'm thinking I have in excess of 20 videos that talk about LexD containers and LexD container networking. 
So Canonical developed the Cloud Init platform, which inputs data from providers like Amazon EC2 and Microsoft Azure to configure images with greater control. They developed the Mirror Display Manager as a cross-platform display server. And they created Launchpad to enable and track project development, much like GitHub. They developed OpenStack, which is an infrastructure scalable platform for enterprise cloud computing. And Ubuntu is a direct derivative of Debian, which is a firmly established Linux branch. So a little bit about my Ubuntu journey. I moved to Ubuntu 7.04, codenamed Feisty Fawn, in 2007 after a major Windows Vista data loss that I had. It was bad. My Ubuntu 7.04 machine was running on an old single core Pentium 4 Prescott with two gigabytes of memory and my disk was a PATA 256 gigabyte drive. I guess the only redeeming factor was I was running a 64-bit OS. So later I switched to a SATA drive and I upgraded my processor. In fact, I can't really remember how many iterations or changes between different machines that I made. My, my system drive was still a master boot record, MBR, boot drive with a file allocation table and that was my partition table and a couple of hardware generations later I was finally on a UEFI motherboard and I did an in-place transition from master boot record to EFI and from a fat partition table to a GPT or good partition table. Today, I'm on an Intel Core i7-8700 CPU with 16 gigabytes of memory and a 2 terabyte NVMe drive. The impressive part is that my Ubuntu 2204 that I use today has been upgraded and moved to newer hardware during many iterations and each different Ubuntu version. And I never did a wipe and a reload. That upgrade over the years was possible because I have been running a 64-bit Ubuntu all the time. Had I moved from a 32-bit to a 64-bit, I would have had to do a wipe and reload. But back in 2007, I was, believe it or not, using 64-bit. And I was able to move between each version of Ubuntu. When I moved to a newer machine or a newer hard drive, I simply copied the data over and I was just fine. So try that with Windows. <laughs> so in summary, any Linux is highly configurable. If you don't like how something works, change it rather than doing distro hopping. Now it's really great to go out and run a virtual machine of the newest distro to see all the great things they're doing in that particular distro, but chances are you'll probably be able to enable any features that you see on the newer distro on your distro that you're currently using. So as an example, I disagree with Nautilus as the file manager in Ubuntu. So I tend to install the Nemo file manager instead. And on the channel before, I've mentioned some of the features that I like about the Nemo file manager, and that's why I use it. But again, that's personal choice. Linux is about personal preference and anything that can be customized to meet your requirements. So Ubuntu is a good basic distro with a dominant support community. Choice of a Linux distro is a personal choice and there are no wrong choices. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like the channel and press the notification bell so you can be aware of new videos and we'll see you next time.